So if you know me, then you'd know that I'm a bit of a Robert Eggers enjoyer. The Witch feels like a film that would actually be made in the 1600s, and The Lighthouse is one of my favorite films ever, and is the best horror comedy since Evil Dead 2. So naturally, I was excited for his newest film, The Northmen, and it was pretty neat. Not as good as his previous two films, but good nonetheless. It kinda gave me Villeneuve vibes in that it's a big blockbuster film with an art house edge to it. And it worked pretty well, except for the scenes where the film didn't know when it wanted to be a blockbuster and when it wanted to be an art house film. Like, there are some really amazing action scenes, and then there are just some scenes where the main character just talks to himself. And it's super weird and feels out of place considering how down-to-earth the film is. Like, there's this one scene where the main character is literally talking to his sword, and he's like, I will use you in uh, another, another day when the sun shall smite the water, and I will torment my enemies, and you will do that killing thing later it's just it was really odd and a little bit funny other than the child performances i can't really think of a bad performance alexander skarzard Anya taylor joy nicole kidman willem dafoe ethan hawk claus bang and gustav lind are all fantastic it doesn't matter if their role was big or small they all gave it their all i'm dr seuss Romances in non-romance films, and even in romance films, feel forced and unnecessary, but the romance in this film actually has meaning, and Anya Taylor-Joy's character, Olga, adds a lot to the story, and she isn't just there for the romance plot. And yeah, I was totally watching The Northman for the, um, for the plot. So if you have not seen The Northmen, skip to this point in the video. I like how the film makes you question if Amleth should even be going on this quest for revenge. Like once you find out that his mother was in on the murder of his father, he rethinks everything and so does the audience. We're so used to films like this where the mother is, um, to use a PG term, being taken advantage of by the new king or leader or whatever. So it's a breath of fresh air that they took another direction with it. So was it just me or did the fight with the giant feel a bit unnecessary? Necessary. Like, I was thinking after the scene happened how it fit into the greater narrative, but I couldn't really think of anything. It kind of felt like the ending scene with the Green Knight, where the main character's what would have been his life flashes before his eyes, but in that film it had a greater narrative, but here it just it didn't. Although it definitely was the coolest fight in the film. The ending of this film was absolutely amazing. Earlier in the movie, the witch dude was like, You can choose to love your kin or hate your enemies, and Almuth finds out that Olga's pregnant, and he's like, I choose both and at that point everyone knows that he is going to die but the film knew that the audience is going to think that so instead of pretending like the audience is dumb the film plays into the tragedy of the situation the dude kills his mother and his half brother and you can clearly see the shame and guilt on his face and i love that moment where fang walks in the room and sees this and gives almuth some time before they fight maybe i'm reading too far into it but i really love that and the fight was gorgeously shot the shadows were used perfectly making the scene feel important and cinematic the conclusion was satisfying and did not feel cheap at all. The score for this film is Chef's Kiss. I like to listen to the score of the film that I'm reviewing as I write the review, and it's kind of hard to do that when the score is so atmospheric and immersive. I found myself several times stripping off my clothing and talking like a viking. But for real, the score is so bombastic that you can't really help but to pay attention to what's happening on the screen. Visually, this film is very beautiful, but the night scenes felt kind of like TV in the way that it was lit. Like, it was so obvious that it was lit by the Link Linko, Linko Store Photo Video Studio Light Kit AM169, and not the moon. Like I said, this film isn't as good as Edgar's previous two films, but it is still a very solid film, and I give The Northmen an 8.5 out of 10.